In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to use phrase.io to create an outline for and write a blog post. So I'm in the phrase.io dashboard and uh, I'm over here in the outline builder. So just in the left hand menu, click on outline builder and you can do a little bit of keyword research here. Uh, it's not a really robust keyword research tool, but you can uh, do a little bit. So I put in the main keyword. I want to write uh, an article about uh, what a sales funnel is. So I put in what is a sales funnel. And you can see here it's got the volume. It's got some related keywords. And so I'm just going to leave it on that. If I were to click on one of these keywords, then it would repopulate this with uh, related questions for that keyword. But I want to keep it on this one. And uh, now I can just go down here and there's questions from Google. There's questions from Quora, and there's also questions from Reddit, uh, all available here. And you can just check off the ones that you want to include in your outline. Uh, so I definitely want uh, most of the ones, or I usually use mostly questions from Google, um, but the Quora and Reddit ones can be really interesting to look at to get ideas for your article as well. But what I do is I kind of grab mostly the Google questions that come from Google auto suggest and Google related searches and Google people also ask. And I use those uh, as uh, headings and as frequently asked questions in my article. So we're going to take this one, just uh, grab a bunch of these. Just grab those ones and then I'm going to click on create document and you can choose a folder here. Um, I'm just going to leave it in general and this is important that the target search query is correct. So it is what is a sales funnel is what I wanted to do. So I'm going to go to create document and first thing to notice is that over here on the right it's uh, researching a bunch of articles for me and uh, up here we have two tabs. We have content brief and we have my content. So the first thing that I like to do is highlight this and hit control X and then come over to my content and paste it. And then I move this down and I change this, which is the keyword to fact. And basically the way I write this is um, I'll pull up some of these to use as headings as I'm writing the article. And the ones that I don't pull up to use as headings end up being frequently asked questions at the end of the article. Um, and then I'm going to come back over here to the content brief. And you can see we've got the top 20 results processed for this keyword. Um, normally I would go to edit and I would go through and make sure that all of the checked, um, all of the checked results are actually relevant, but I think in this case they will be because it's a very clear keyword. Um, and the next thing I want to do is automate a content brief. So if we go to workflows and automate content brief, um, this is the way I'm doing this now. Um, if I if I were doing this for someone else, then I would leave in the guidelines and I'm going to turn that off. I always leave on people also ask turn this off. I'm going to turn topics on, topic clusters off, and I also want the headers and the questions and the statistics. And I'm just going to click insert brief into editor and it's going to do a little bit more research and compile some information for me and insert it right in here. So these are questions from people also ask on Google. These are the top 20 recommended topics to include. Um, these are headers that are used from other people's articles. So good, uh, good place to get ideas. These are uh, questions that appear in other people's articles or questions that appear in places like Quora and Reddit. And these are statistics that are used in other people's articles. So it can be a good um, place to start when you're looking for things to reference if you want to use the same resources or find a comparable resource to what your competition is using. Let's see what we have here. Um, 
Now, the way that we're going to get started is there's kind of two ways that you can get started. You can uh, start writing if you have an idea and then use the AI writer to build on what you write. Or you can uh, start with smart lists. Or I guess there's three ways you can also start with a uh, AI template. So I'm just going to go with the template for now. As you can see, there's a bunch of different templates here and one of them is blog introduction. You can actually make your own templates as well, but that's gonna be a separate video. And so I'll click on blog introduction and it's just asking me for an article title. So I'm just gonna put in what is a sales funnel since I don't have a full title yet and run the template. And it's thinking and uh, it put in a question mark for me since there's no question mark at the end of that question. All right, a sales funnel is a marketing tool used to guide prospects through a series of steps before they become customers. It helps you identify who your ideal customer is, what they want, and how you can provide value to them. Sales funnels are also known as lead generation systems. They are used to convert leads into paying customers. If you're looking to start a new business or improve an existing one, then you'll definitely benefit from learning about sales funnels. Here's a quick overview of what a sales funnel looks like. That's a pretty good intro. I would probably change a few things about that, but we're not gonna to do too much editing right now. I mostly want to show off how the AI tools actually work. So I'm kind of curious what it would say next. So I'm just gonna to go to AI Writer and write for me. And now here I can modify what the length output will be. I'm gonna make it a bit shorter. And here I can modify the creativity. I'm gonna leave it on low. And I could put in background context, but I think it has all the background context it needs. So I'm just gonna make sure the cursor is in the right place. And I'm gonna say, write for me. You can also do this by hitting Control Enter. And then if you wanna stop it, you can hit Stop or Control S. Command S, Control, Command Enter on, uh, on a Mac. So let's see, where did it start? Here's a quick overview of what a sales funnel looks like. The first step in the process is called awareness. So I think I would start a heading here. Or actually, I'm just gonna change this a little bit. I'm gonna say, let's take an in-depth look at what a sales funnel is. Not the greatest grammar, but we can always come back to that later. And then I'm gonna pull this uh, fact up. So I'm just gonna hit Control X, Control V, get rid of the bullet and highlight this and turn it into an H2. And add a question mark because otherwise the computer will do it for me. All right, so the first step in the process is called awareness. So I'm just going to say a sales funnel can be broken down into a series of logical steps. And then we'll have awareness as an H3. The first step in the process is called awareness. This means that someone has heard about your product or service and wants more information. The next stage is interest. I'm going to save this for down here. And then I'm going to say, this means that someone has heard about your product service and wants more information. You can spread awareness by, and I'm just going to hit control enter. And it's going to finish my thought, hopefully. That's pretty much exactly what I was hoping it would do. I wanted a list, so. Spread awareness by using any number of methods, including social media, email campaigns, search engine optimization, blogging. And once people have been made aware of your brand, you need to capture their attention. The next stage is interest. So I'll just put interest as an H3 and then move this up. And I don't want it to be redundant, so I'll get rid of this. Interest happens when people sign up for your email list. Then comes consideration. 
So we're, we're gonna do this as an Aida funnel. So it'll be awareness, interest, desire, action. Interest happens when I'm going to hit control enter again. When potential buyers find out enough details about your company's products and services to make them curious about buying, interest could come from anything such as reading reviews on Google, visiting websites, watching videos, or following on social media. Desire. This is where things get interesting. Desire occurs when interested parties actually visit your website. Control enter. If visitors don't see exactly what they were searching for, they may leave without taking action. However, if they do decide to continue browsing, this is when you present your offer with a clear Call to action. Make that an H3 and just say action is and control enter. Action is where most companies fail. Most businesses assume that once someone visits their site, they will automatically buy but not everyone buys right away. In fact, some people might even bounce off after seeing just one page. That's why you must create multiple calls to action so that visitors know there are other options available. I'm just gonna say that's why using multiple calls to action throughout a page is ideal. Okay, and I don't want this video to go too long, and we've already written 350 words, most of which came from the AI, um, but I'll show you how some of the other tools work. So we already used a framework, and we've been using the long form writer. Um, but if we go here, we also have smart lists. And um, with smart lists, you can ask for topics about the above, questions about the above, an outline about the above, or takeaways about the above. So now that we've got some information, we should make sure the cursor's in the right place and go to smart lists and first we'll try um, outline about the above and we'll see what it gives us in the way of headings wow that's a lot of uh, topics it's one that i like though <laughs> it was customer retention Action is not the final step of the full sales funnel. Oh. We'll have customer retention and lifetime value. Boom. All right. Um, let's try another smart list. Uh, questions about the above. What is customer lifetime value? How much should I invest in my sales funnel? All right, so we got some good questions there. And anyways, that's how the smart lists work. Um, losing my voice a little bit because it's dry in here, so I think I'm gonna wrap this video up. Anyways, we've got uh, 430 words, uh, most of which came from the AI. And it's been 15 minutes of me talking and giving instructions, and we did the outline. Uh, so you can see how that comes together pretty quickly, and you can do that all of that inside of Phrase. Um, so uh, leave me a comment if you've got any questions, and I will catch you in the next video.